Hi and welcome to a new video. In this video I wanted to do an update on my uh, last one I did for the Vodafone uh, router. Uh, so basically this is the uh, going to be the Vodafone Wi-Fi hub. So the model number is the THG3000. So as you can see here in the actual image this is what the, uh, the router looks like. So I was going to go through the actual uh, settings. Uh, so for, from the first login screens, you can see here all the way to uh, through uh, the expert settings as well. So you can have a look to see what the actual settings are and if there's any need for you to actually go in there and do anything if you ever do need to. Again, they've got an app, but I do prefer to use this um, via a web browser. So you can use it on your tablet or phone as well using Safari, Chrome, Firefox, or whichever browser you want to use. So what you will need to do is uh, log into the, the uh, router to first of all. So the, the router is actually uh, at address uh, you type in is 192.168.1.1. That will then come up to this load uh, screen here so where you can log in. You just type the password. That's always at the bottom, as you can see here, at the bottom of the actual uh, router here. Um, and then you just click on login. It should then log you in for the first time. It, you will get some of these warnings at the top here, so we'll come to those in a minute. So you can see this is the main overview screen uh, as soon as you log in. Uh, so I've, uh, this is my uh, first time, so this is a factory reset, so everything is uh, brand new as you uh, see it for the first time. You can come in here, you can see your actual uh, router here and then if it has internet so mine's done by city fiber so it's got the ethernet wan then it how many devices you've got one uh, device is connected and if it's by the 2.4 or the 5 gigahertz frequency so this uh, router actually supports the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz so just to give you some specs on this this is uh, actually the vendor uh, manufacturer comes under technicolor and as you said, the actual model is the THG3000. It has a Broadcom uh, chipset, so that's the BCM63136, uh, if you want to get technical. So that's a dual-core 1 gigahertz uh, CPU. It has 512 um, megabytes of uh, RAM. And for the flash memory, so that's a storage, it has 256 megabytes. As we said, it's got the Broadcom chipset for the wireless as well and then for the LAN uh, so this does cover uh, B, G and N and also on the 2.4 and on the uh, 5 gigahertz band you've got A, N and A, C as well so it has at the back it has 5 uh, gigabit ports, ethernet ports one of them will be your for your WAN so that's for your internet to connect to your box on the wall or ONT box so you'll have four uh, Ethernet ports to plug other devices in if, you, if you're if you lucky enough to have Ethernet run through your house and everything else. It does include a VDSL2 um, and GFAST uh, modem inside there. So you can, of course, um, use this with your different uh, Internet connections. And it's got uh, USB ports on the back as well and they're USB 2.0. So they're the older standard. Um, so if you are plugging in any devices for storage sharing that we'll come into later, just be wary of that. The speeds will be a little bit lower than you uh, uh, for your, you know, transferring for information. So if you are going to be using it for backup, um, it's going to be a bit slower than before. So me, moving back to the actual uh, interface here. So as we can see here, we've got Wi-Fi. So that shows, you, as we said, how many devices you've got. It sells there if you've got the schedule uh, is off. So if you have that on, it will show it here. So the schedule, as we come to later, is when you can switch the Wi-Fi off. Um, so if at night time you want it switched off, you can schedule that to switch off the Wi-Fi and switch it back on. So you can switch it off at 2 in the morning and uh, have it come back on at 5 in the morning. You have uh, WPS. So that's the button on the back where you press. And then you go to your, say, printer that has a WPS as well, and you, and you push the uh, pair or the uh, WPS button on your printer device, and you won't have to type any passwords, and it automatically connects. Just be aware of this. It's not very, uh, it's a, a known security issues using this uh, feature. So 
I would advise to have it switched off, but it is on by default. And as we said, all your devices that are connected to Wi-Fi will show under the relevant device band. Network is, so this is uh, showing you how many devices are connected to your Ethernet port. So all your devices that are connected by Ethernet will be listed under here. You have a USB, so as we said, it's USB 2.0. As you can see here, I've got the Vodafone mobile broadband. So that's the dongle that actually plugs in the back. So if my internet actually goes out, my city fiber connection uh, disappears or uh, disconnects, then this, uh, after a matter of a few minutes, then the uh, 4G will actually kick in and still give you internet. And then lastly, if you have a phone line like I do, you have a home phone, then your profile should show you that you have one phone as well. And as we said, there's ports in the back where you can plug your phone into the back of this as well. So it does support that. So if we just scroll back up, you can see here, you'll see basically it'll just warn you to say that you're still using the default Wi-Fi password and it asks you to change it. So just giving you some advice. And then it's saying here as well, your default login password as well, you need to change. Just be aware if you're going to change all these details, um, you're going to make sure that you just remember them because if you come to use it again, uh, you might forget. So it's always best to use a password manager that built into most uh, platforms now and operating systems. So try and look for which one you're relevant and then actually use the password manager to record a strong password and update these. I'm going to dismiss these for now as we're going through. But as I said, just be wary of those there and update if you really uh, feel you need to. Next, we go on to the internet tab. So when we click on internet, you'll see it start to load up the features. Just be, again, so we're in basic mode. So we'll come on to advanced later on and that gives you more settings under each of these uh, menu headers. So if we come here, you've got the firewall under internet. So you can click here again and I'll just refresh that. So you have two options under the firewall. You can have it on, so it's on by default. And of course, it's always advisable to leave that switched on. And then also, the, by default, the allow ping to WAN interface is switched off and that's best to switch that off. Uh, there's no need really to have that switched on. Um, and what this does is if someone starts to, like a, a hacker or any bots out there that you know are scanning the internet like they do um, and they're looking for any internet connected devices, this will respond to it if you switch this on. So it's off by default and it's best to keep it off by uh, default as well. And again, as we said, the firewall, that just blocks anything uh, malicious coming through and also keeps an eye on all the, the devices that are going back and forward uh, on your network to keep you secure. So it's always best to keep the firewall switched on unless there's anything else that you're doing. And then next we go to Wi-Fi. So you can see the Wi-Fi here. So you've got the general, the schedule and the WPS. So if we stick with the general Wi-Fi settings, you can see here it says Super Wi-Fi is running. So what if you do have this, if you have like a uh, another extender or booster Wi-Fi device, then this will take over and it does ma actually limit on some of the features that you can actually do. You can see here you can actually switch off the Wi-Fi if you want to. There is a button on the back of the uh, router as well that you can uh, push and that will switch off Wi-Fi for any reason you want to switch off the Wi-Fi. You can just do that on the back and that's the equivalent of switching this toggle off. And then you've got here enable Wi-Fi on and off button. So as we said, you can switch off that button. So if you've got it on the floor, you've got pets or anything like that, keep uh, rummaging around and accidentally pushing the button on the back you, and then switching off your Wi-Fi, you can just uh, switch that off so the button doesn't function. Down here, you've got setup. So this is your default uh, Wi-Fi uh, network, so you have your main Wi-Fi, so this will be your Wi-Fi SSD, uh, SSID and your Wi-Fi name, so that's your default one that's printed at the bottom of the router. You have your protection mode, so this is encryption, so again it's always best to leave it on WPA2. Uh, there is a new standard WPA3, but this doesn't currently support it. Um, and then you've got your Wi-Fi password. So here you can click and it will show you the default password and you can type that in as well so you can always see. If you do want to change that password again, uh, click on here and you can go there and it will just ask you for your new password and re-enter uh, password again and it will give you a strength as well. So it's always good here, it's giving you good practice and also a password strength meter as well so you can judge the password you're actually uh, changing it to. 
Next you have Wi-Fi 2, so this is if you want to switch on uh, another Wi-Fi band. So this is quite good if you want to separate out your network. Um, it's quite advisable sometimes to do this. You can then type this in for your guest. So your guest network, so other people can connect. And again with this, you can change the password so it has a different password. So guests can connect to your internet and they can uh, have a different password, not the same password as you're using for the main network. Or if you're splitting out Internet of Thing devices like your webcams, IP cameras, and other devices you want to separate out a different network for some reason, uh, then you can do that as well. And all you do, like we said, is just uh, toggle this on. It comes up with the settings. All you need to do is just change the name, or you can keep it as default if you want to, uh, and it'll keep the default password. If you want to see the password, just click on here. It will show you to display the password. And then always make sure after you've made the changes, click apply. And again, just make sure you remember the details you've changed it to. So that's the uh, general tab. Now, if we move on to schedule, uh, we can uh, come on to here. So as we said here, this basically schedules the time when you want your Wi-Fi to be automatically switched on and off. And it says, please note, if your Wi-Fi is switched off, both the main and the Wi-Fi 2 network will be disabled. So it disables both the networks. We can toggle this on and you can see here there's no schedule set up. Again, we can click on here and it brings up the menu. So you can see a time frame. So it's every weekday or every day and then all weekend uh, or individual days. And then you can choose the individual days down here as well. So it's a, you've got a lot of options there and the status is either enable or disable. Um, so you want to, if you want to disable your internet um, between certain times, like we said, you want to make sure that you just click disable and then name this one. So you want to uh, name it something like uh, children's uh, offline time or bedtime. And then you can basically switch the time here from whatever you choose. Uh, it's, I think it's the 24 hour clock. So you can choose from one like 10 o'clock all the way to six o'clock in the morning and it'll switch the Wi-Fi off. But again, don't forget it switches the Wi-Fi off for every or Wi-Fi off for everyone. So if you want to use it, um, then you won't be able to. So just be aware of that. So again, as we said, you just put that status to disable if you want it to switch off the internet. And then you click save, and then that will save your new profile and it'll be here. Then just make sure also at the as well you click apply that will then apply the new settings for you. Um, so you always make sure you do that. Uh, lastly on this uh, menu as well for Wi-Fi, we'll come across is connecting devices with WPS. So again, it's saying here, uh, pair your devices by pressing a button. Uh, to pair your device, press pair, then press the WPS button on your device. You'll want to connect. Your Vodafone Wi-Fi hub will open for pairing for up to two minutes after you've pressed pair on the other device. So you can click pair here as well. And as we said, um, if you want to, you don't have to log into this, there's a WPS button on the back of the router. Again, I would advise sometimes uh, if you're able to, to switch this off. As you can see here, sometimes uh, basically uh, I've got the super Wi-Fi is running, so it basically won't allow me to, but you should have a toggle there if it's available to you to switch this off and advise when you're not using it, switch it off because it is a security concern um, and it has a lot of flaws in it. Next, we go to sharing. So here you can see you've got sharing of uh, hard drives and printers. This is on by default. So basically, if you use the USB ports, uh, you can plug in a, a small USB hard drive. Don't forget, if you are going to plug in a big hard drive, like a 3.5 inch hard drive, you're probably going to need external power. Some uh, small SSDs and things like that might be able to run off the actual voltage that's coming through the USB port. But most of the time you'll need an external power as well for the drive you're plugging in. And then again, you can also share your printer as well. So again, once you plug those in, as it says here, uh, see information below on which devices are uh, shared on your network. So once you plug that in, you'll be able to see there. Again, once you do, you can click apply. So if you do want to switch off, you don't want to share printers, or hard drives, you can click here, apply, and that'll switch off that function. It probably might just give a little bit more, uh, you know, if you're not using the features, it'll just free up some resources on the RAM and the CPU as well, because it's not looking to share anything. So uh, second to last, we'll go into settings. And again, uh, as this is under basic mode, you've only got two there, so you've got password. So this is your 
uh, Wi-Fi hub password. So this is your login password. Here you can actually change the password as we said before. You can come in here. This time you will need to actually type in your current password and then retype your new password twice. As again, it says here, it must be at least eight characters and, and must contain at least three of the four following characters. So it gives you an idea of how strength of your password is. Again, if you have uh, forgotten your password and you managed to log in here still, you can reset it here and that will be reset back to the password that's written on the back of your, uh, sorry, on the bottom of the router. Again, remember it's a different, the Wi-Fi password and then you've got the router admin password, a different password. So just be wary when you're looking at them. Then you've got LED settings. So if you do have this in your bedroom or something like that and uh, you don't want the uh, status LEDs uh, too bright for you or if they're in the living room you want to switch them off, here you can come in here and switch it off and then click apply and it'll switch off the LEDs. Uh, I'd advise most of the time to leave them on so you can, if you know, have any issues or internet disconnects, you can see the internet WAN and then uh, any other lights that come on um, that there's activity and you can diagnose it a bit quicker. But again, if you if you are confident and uh, your internet connection has been stable for a long time, then you can leave this uh, switched off and then uh, you don't need to worry about that uh, interfering with you. So next uh, and lastly is the status and support. So again, this will show up the status. So again, this will give you all the information about your internet connection. Uh, so it will load up. It might refresh a few times when you actually load this up because it's going through all the changes on here. So just give it a minute to load up, um, might be twice. This will show you your internet IP address, the gateway, and your primary and secondary DNS servers. So your IP address is your internet web address, so your IP address for the internet. Uh, the gateway is to the uh, internet, so that's used as Vodafone's. And again, you've got the primary DNS and secondary DNS. So these are default Vodafone uh, DNS servers that you're using. If you're not too sure what a DNS server is, I've got other videos. Um, so have a look at where I go in more detail, but basically they're like a phone book. Um, you type in a uh, google.com and it will translate that straight to the IP address. So it basically looks up the uh, internet uh, address for you and the IP address and links them together. And you can change these later on as we go through the settings. You can see here any other settings that have been set up and then you can see here how long you've been connected to the internet. And then it'll give you your local network information as well so you can see everything else that's on here. Again, if you want to come down here, it'll show you the connected speed of your LAN port. So if you only have any plugged in like a little hub, so it's like Hive or something like that, it's only 100 megabytes, it'll show you that it's connected only at 100 or if you've plugged in like a gig, uh, like your consoles or anything like that, or a computer, um, it'll show you the uh, 1000 megabytes uh, per second here. Then you've got it down here where we split the main Wi-Fi bands. Again, it's disabled, we've only got the one, so we haven't switched it on yet. So that would show the two names. And then you can see all the details here where we've got the bandwidth, the channel, the encryption standard you've got, um, your name of that says your SSID that we've set up, and then you can see here the maximum bandwidth and the minimum synchronized speed. And then you can go to the five gigahertz as well, because this includes five. And then you can see the encryption the same as well. So you can see all the details. So this gives you a bit more details about your network and what you should expect of uh, connection speeds as well. Again, you can see here, this one's currently disabled. And then you can see the information here. And it gives you a lot of the way it splits it all down so you can keep on going and you can see more technical information about the serial number of your router, and you can see the CPU usage, uh, and also you can see the memory usage as well. And the last time you rebooted was the cause, was like for myself, was a factory reset, and you've got all the driver information and the date and time. So it gives you all that down there as well. And then down the bottom here in gray, it gives you the firmware version and IP address. So if you really want to get technical, you can find all this information um, all under the status under here as soon as you click in here. We can click on fiber status and this, again, this is your fiber connection if you are connected by fiber and it will show you the status So up means it's online and then it shows you the maximum connection and then a duplex mode if it's half or full. 
you have a diagnostic utility so you're having any problems with your internet you can click on here to uh, diagnose it as it says it does take two minutes um, and once it's started it cannot be cancelled so this is basically just testing your internet connection you can do a ping test so if you're not getting a uh, connection to anywhere you can then choose an IP address that you want to ping uh, normally like to Google or one of the big servers and then you've got a tracing tool so basically you, on this drop down you can choose which one you want to trace the data connection so if you already got you the like the mobile broadband uh, dongle plugged in you can use that your LAN guest and a LAN main and then your WAN is your internet connection normally you'll just use it for your WAN but you can do use this tracing for your LAN as well and you can click start and it will just go through the information as well you have the reconnect so you can see here where you got your DSL connection so if you're not using fiber and then if it, you are using fiber it'll give you your IP address and then it says it both are active if you've got a version 6 IP as well and you can click reconnect if you want to and then lastly we've got here is the about so this basically tells you again your firmware your product name and all the different versions of the software so of course a lot of open this use a very a lot of open software uh, licensed software um, so basically it's for free and every any company to use and everything else and so they have to acknowledge them and you can see here it goes on for a lot and just an interesting point as well if you always want if you're very technical um, if you go all the way down to the bottom it actually does say about the of course the warranty and everything else but also uh, down here about the license um, and also the distribution of the open source software that it goes on to here. But also you can obtain a version of the source code as well that's distributed by Vodafone and you can email them for it and then uh, it just basically gives you more details of what you want to do. So if you do want a copy of it yourself for some reason, uh, there is a, a basically a link, um, an email address as well to get that. So that's the uh, all the basic mode done with all the features here. So now we're going to move on to the advanced mode. So now we're going to move on to the advanced settings or expert mode as they call it. Um, so within the actual router, if you go onto the top here where it's got the drop down, here is where you can go to expert mode. So this gives you basically more settings if you're more comfortable, more technical person. You can make more customizations to your internet connection um, and then the settings as well. So if we just click on uh, expert mode again, also if you do want to log out, the easiest way is just to go use this drop down and log out and that'll take you back to the login screen. So if we click on expert mode, so you can see here not much changes in the overview screen, it still stays the same. Um, but it's only when we come into the further options up here, then you'll see more options available. So now if we click on internet, you can see before we had the uh, firewall, but now we have all these other options below it. So I won't go through firewall again, because we've already covered that. So we'll next we'll go on to the IP version four port mapping. So here is again, is about mapping your ports and things like that. So you can see here, you can actually open up ports. So if you want to, if you've got like a home server or a network uh, storage device or a NAS, then you want to, certain ports open sometimes, uh, then you can do that here. So you can just go into this port mapping option for version four uh, IP address, click the plus, and you, then you can uh, call the service name. So if you've got a, like a, a web server, um, so you can just call it uh, wherever you like for the service, you can set it to whichever protocol. Again, uh, it gives you the choice here. And then you can choose from the drop down here as well what device, uh, so that's good, you can specify that. And then what the uh, IP address is. So if you select the device from the drop down, it should auto populate this IP address. If it doesn't, you'll need to find it, and that'll be on the overview uh, tab that's on the option at the very beginning. And then you can see here it's either a port, so this limits the uh, port to one port. So you've got the public, so that's the outside internet uh, port that will be connecting and this is your local one just be wary sometimes they're not the same port and if you want to be extra secure sometimes you'll change the public port to something different um, so like uh, with your web servers and things like that you probably want to change it uh, from the standard ports uh, but you can then direct it to your local port at like the standard one again you can also do a port range so you can see start from 
uh, certain ports you can open up uh, two to four or whatever ports it is you want uh, for any reason and again you've got your public and local as well just be wary that when you do open ports this opens them up to the internet and connects that device to the internet as well on that port uh, so it's accessible so just be wary of that when for security so it's good that we've got the option you've got dynamic port mapping as well so that's uh, normally if you've enabled uh, UMPMP um, so basically the device has opened up its own port um, on the router and they will show down here as well. So it's always good to keep an eye on here just in case you have any uh, infected devices that sometimes open up ports uh, so they can communicate with the internet. Then you have the IP version 6 settings. So as you can see here there's nothing set up for pinholes so this allows a remote computers to connect to a specific device within your private network. This is specific to IP version 6 and again you can set this up on the same kind of screen. You've got here the port range, the port, and you can select the device and the surface. So again, it gives you the option for IP4 and IP6 as well. Then you have the static NAT or DMZ. So again, be very wary of uh, switching this on. Um, so sometimes people will want to open up their servers, but then this does expose the, your host or exposes the device that you're actually listing here. So if you switch this on, again, it's warning you here as well about certain things and the security. Here's where you can type in, it shows you your public IP address and then also you can type in the device on your network, the local IP address, so that'll probably be 192.168.1 and then whatever the number is at the end. Uh, this does open it up, um, so it exposes it totally to the internet, uh, bypasses the, the firewall and everything, so there's no protection. So that device uh, it, you know, will be uh, out on the internet uh, for everyone to see. So just be wary if you are going to be using this function. And most of the time, I'd say it's off by default and keep it off. Um, you don't need to switch it on unless you're really technical and you understand what this does. Next, you've got the DNS and dynamic DNS. So you can see here there you, um, as by default it's on automatic. You could switch this to manual and so this is always good if you don't want to use the default uh, Vodafone DNS servers. So every website you, you look at uh, I, uh, Vodafone will be able to see. Um, so they use that, they use the DNS servers that when you're looking up them, um, they use their servers to log and everything else so they can identify what websites you're going to. If you are more privacy, you can switch this to manual and then you can change these to whichever ones you think you feel more comfortable with that have got better security. So you can have um, like this one here. So you've got uh, Cloudflare or you've got the uh, Google one as well. Um, so you can change your servers. You can look up more about the DNS uh, servers and then which ones are best for you. Um, so you do have lots of options out there for more security, more privacy, or you know certain ones block ads and block um, malware and or certain uh, parental controls they put in place. Uh, so it's always good to actually have a look to see and do a search on which DNS servers are best suited for you. Next you have the dynamic DNS. So basically this turns your IP address that you've got into something that you can actually type. So you can see here, uh, you can got several services that are supported. So you, if you go to any of these companies, their website, and uh, you basically you type in their details or your domain name. So basically, you could say, I want my uh, to have uh, at this address. Um, so then you can have that. So when you type this in, it will connect to your uh, device, your uh, router. But again, be wary that you know people can use this. Uh, so this is external details, so you have to get this from the, each of these companies, whichever one you sign up with. It does come in handy if you've got web servers and, as I said, network storage or uh, Plex servers and things like that. You can actually set this up so you don't have to remember the IP. Don't forget, every time you restart your router as well, it gets a new IP address. With this, you just have to remember the name, whichever your domain name that you actually choose. Um, you just have to remember to type that in and perhaps afterwards you might have to type in the 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 port for it So it directs you to that certain service or anything like that So it's always a really good feature to have on this one and it adds a lot of functions and things for people uh, These two functions here as well for privacy security 
and also if you've got a, a customized network home network where you need to access as well and it's, it easy, makes it easier lastly on this uh, internet one we have the mobile 3g so this is only if you've got the uh, vodafone 4g or 3g dongle that plugs in the back uh, so it's your backup wi-fi again just make sure these all these details are correct you can see here that you probably want to leave the dns as automatic um, you can have fixed mobile access as well so basically it says here do you want to enable fixed mobile access only uh, you can just click uh, OK if you really want to. Um, then you've got the network type, so preference. So you've got 3G, 4G. So again, you can leave it on auto, so it default back to 3G. Um, I would leave it or probably, if you've got a choice, I leave it to 4G uh, preferred because um, you want the faster connection. At least it will still, if the only problem is if you do 4G only and you don't have a good 4G like I do um, here, then um, it won't actually connect to and back up your network because it can't connect to the 4G. So if you do 4G preferred, at least it will try its best to connect to the 4G network first. And then if it can't, it will connect to the 3G. So I think it's a bit, a bit of a better option to have 4G than the auto. Next, you've got here all the details. Again, you shouldn't change this. This is all just standard. And then as well as the APN, you should leave that as standard as well. You can switch this off using the toggle here. For some reason, you want to switch it off. Um, but as I said, the only setting I would uh, change is this 4G preferred. Everything else I'd leave the same um, on here to just be uh, so it works straight away without any issues. Next, we're moving on to Wi-Fi. So as again, as we saw before, we've already gone through the general uh, settings and we went through the schedule and WPS. Now you'll see Wi-Fi settings. So here you've got more details. Again, you can see I've got limited access on these settings because I've got super Wi-Fi is running. It's quite annoying sometimes. Um, I, you know, if you're more a technical person and you want to configure these things more, you should be given the option. Um, they shouldn't just limit things for you. I know they're trying to do this so that you can use the app to manage more of the settings and things like that, but they should give you the option. You have the Wi-Fi mode, so here you can actually choose it. So you've got a mixed uh, B and G or uh, B, G and N. So of course on this one, um, it's always best to leave it on its default of B, G and N. Then you've got bandwidth of 20. So again, it defaults to 20. If you want faster connection, I would advise switching that to the 20 and 40. This will give you much quicker speeds and still backwards compatible as well. So I don't know why they default. Um, to 20. Uh, I know sometimes it's to do with older devices and compatibility, but not many people have got B and G devices at all anymore. Um, so I would put that to 20 and 40 and that'll give you much uh, better speeds when connecting on the 2.4. You've got the five gigahertz band here as well. So the bandwidth, so as you can see here, you have the options here. So it's as good that it actually gives you by default, it gives you the 20, 40 in the 80 megahertz bands, uh, frequencies, sorry, in the band. Um, so that's really good to see as well. And if you're not on that for some reason, it's only set to 20 and 40, make sure you select the 20, 40 and 80. And again, once you change the setting, click apply. Um, and then you shouldn't have any issues connecting because this basically just opens up the band so you can, newer devices and things like that can connect at much quicker speeds. And lastly, we have the uh, Mac filter, so we can click on here. So again, the Mac filter says it says there to make wireless network more secure, you can specify uh, which devices are allowed to connect. So you can manage up to 32 devices. So using the Mac filtering, you've got your main Wi-Fi and your Wi-Fi too. So if you do want to limit things on here, um, so as we said before, if you want to turn this into a guest or if you want this to an IoT, devices only. You can switch on the Mac filtering. So this will allow or deny. Um, and then basically you can come on here. So all basic access list for devices is you deny. Um, so then you can click on here and you can add all known. And uh, if it's already got a list of known uh, Mac addresses, you can add them from this list. Or if you don't, then you can add a new device by their MAC address. Normally it's on the bottom of the device as a sticker and it has MAC address. You just type that in here and click save. And once you've done that, then you can come down here and click apply. And that basically will block anything new coming into that wants to connect to say the Wi-Fi 2 band uh, that you've set up. 
um, nothing new will be able to uh, actually activate or uh, connect to the Wi-Fi until you add that MAC address onto this list um, and then it will be able to connect. So it's a good security feature. Again, nothing's foolproof. If someone really wants to get into, they can uh, find out MAC addresses, uh, devices connected to your network. Uh, but again, for a normal home network, it just adds that extra security if you're uh, if you want that. If you're in a like a, a flat block of flats and things like that, and you just want to be that a little bit of extra security. Next, you've got sharing. So again, uh, we've got sharing as we've already gone through. So I'll skip over that. Um, so now you have sharing settings. So here you can see here, basically you've got DLNA and then Samba. So basically it says here that these protocols are uh, in use, uh, do not support encryption and will operate on your local network. So basically everything that's transmitted, so login details and things like that, um, are not encrypted so anyone that's on your network can decrypt it and everything else but again if you're just using it for your home network I don't worry too much about it so the DLNA um, so basically if you plug in your USB hard drive it'll advertise that as a media player you can use your media uh, sorry media server so then you can use a media player software they've got on your tablet your phone or your TV, smart TV computer and things like that um, you'll be able to watch your videos uh, from the hard drive uh, that's plugged into the USB port on the router. Um, then you've got the uh, Samba as well. So basically this is the Windows and you should be able to also on the Mac be able to access the files you've got stored there. So any documents like your Word documents, your pictures and things like that you've got in folders. You'll be able to access them from your computer as well or your tablet or your phone. You'll be able to use this as a file server and access them using your Finder on your Mac OS or the uh, Explorer in um, File Explorer in uh, Windows and things like that. So you'll be able to find files and everything else. And these are on by default. If you've reason that you don't want to plug anything in and you don't want to advertise anything, any files or media, you can switch these off um, again and then just click apply. Again, what this will do is just free up some resources in the RAM, the CPU. Uh, if you're not going to be using these features, you can switch them off. And you can switch them back on at any time uh, if you do want to use them. Next, we move on to settings. So you can see here uh, before we had already the password. Now you've got the firmware update. So you can see here the current firmware version. And you can see here the current version that I'm on as of, of June 2024. You can click on here. So the Actual firmware should automatically update when new ones are released, but for some reason you're having issues, it's always best to probably log in here and just check for the internet. And you can see here your internet and LAN connection will be interrupted, so we'll disconnect things uh, for a, a few minutes and you click apply and it will just go out to the internet and check for new firmware. It will confirm that if there's a, a, an update available or you're on the current version, so it's good to see. Again, we've already gone through the LED settings. Uh, you've got configuration now, so this one's quite good. So if you want to back up your settings, you can come in here. So for any reason in the future you have any issues, um, you know, of course you've customized your Wi-Fi names and the passwords for login and your, your sharing details and port forwarding, and you want to save all of that, you can come in here, click save. It will ask you for a strong password, as it says here, you can't put any type of can't just type in password, um, it won't allow you, so weak passwords are not accepted. So just remember this password as well if you're going to do it. Um, again, use a password manager, at least it records it and everything else, and you just have to remember one password and it's stored securely. You could have all of that in there. So again, you type that in, type click save, and then just save it in the relevant folder on your computer, tablet, or phone. Um, and then you can be able to upload that back to here um, if you do have to factory reset anything. And that basically will restore all your settings. Um, so all you do is once you've saved it and downloaded it, you can see here. So if you do have to factory reset for some reason and you've, you do customize your uh, router, uh, you can come in here, click the load button and it will open up and basically it will load the uh, and restore the old configuration file for you so you don't have to retype everything back in. So it's always good to use. 
Um, and again, down here, you've got your factory reset. So if you are having uh, major issues, it's disconnecting everything else. Sometimes the only way to do it is to actually reset the uh, router and you can come in here and do it there. And of course, there is a button on the back where you can, a pinhole where you can reset the uh, router as well if, if you can't access this web interface. You have the public subnet. So again, here you can manage details of your public routed subnet. You can switch this on, it's off by default. Um, again, I advise if you're not wary or understand what this is, leave it switched off because you could um, break your network and things like that. And also you've got a uh, more detailed information and more technical things here about each of your LAN you can set up as well. Um, so it does give you the option here. And as I said, if you don't know what it is, then it's best to leave it off because um, it won't add any value for you. Uh, then you've got the local network. So again, here is where you can customize your network. So if you currently the router is uh, on IP address local one is 192.168.1.1. Um, the subnet and everything else, as you can see, are the same. And that's for both the local network and the Wi-Fi. And you can see here it's got these servers to give IP addresses out for uh, version 4 and version 6. You can switch on this uh, IP version 6 ULA. So you can switch that on as well if you want to and now enable it for both. Um, again, you can leave these on default. You don't need to uh, worry too much about it. And again, here you can change the uh, the host name if you want to, to something different. Uh, again, when you're changing these uh, details and everything else, um, just be wary when you do change any of these details like down here, the server parameters. So this will start giving out IP address from number two all the way to 200. So Basically, you've got like uh, 198 devices kind of thing um, there for you to add. Uh, it's giving you an IP address range. And it's the same as the Wi-Fi 2. If you start updating these, just be wary. It will uh, disconnect all your devices and then it will update as well your IP address for your router as well. So you might not be able to, dis you might not be able to connect. So make sure you're, when you're doing these and updating them for any reason that you remember what you've typed in here. Again, you can change the lease time from forever or to 24 hours or one hour. So basically it will renew the IP address. It will disconnect and try and reconnect the device. Why it's got it forever on the local network is because you don't want to keep disconnecting, connecting items every day or every 24 hours. Um, so it's best to leave that one as default. And again, if you go all the way down to the bottom here, you've got static addresses. So if you want to set up your like your network storage or you want to set up an IP camera, you can click here for a version. So for your Wi-Fi or local network, you click the plus and then you can click the device. So you see my Mac, I can select that. It will populate the Mac address and the IP address. Um, then you click apply um, and then or you click the plus, sorry, and then it will add it to the list below and then you click apply. Same as what you do for here as well uh, for the Wi-Fi. So then every time this device connects, what will happen is it will have the same IP address reserved for it. So at least then you know that specific IP address, you just type in or you can bookmark and it will always go to that certain device on your network. So that's always good to have if you want to set up these uh, static IP addresses. So that's good to have. And again, also always click the apply button as well to apply the settings. And again, we've already gone through Mac filtering, so we'll skip over that. And lastly, if we go to the status and support again, we went through the uh, all the different statuses here, as you can see here. Now we, uh, we did have the uh, NAT mapping table as well, so active connections, um, you can see, and then the number of connections going out as well, and you can download a copy of this into a CSV file, so you can open up an Excel or whichever spreadsheet application you've got. It just gives you the details of the connect each connected device. This time now you've got an event log, so it's always good to see so it will basically start fetching uh, events. So if you are having issues with your internet, um, you can untick these. So if there's only certain ones you want to see uh, uh, on the below um, to show, you can then choose just, I want to see system alerts and things like that. And it'll only show those for all your all events. And then you can just say only errors and warnings. And it would basically just give you a warning of what's happening and things like that. It is a bit technical. So you can use Google or even um, use AI if you want to look up certain things. But again, it gives you just that bit more detail 
to diagnose if you're having disconnection problems or something's being blocked. You can see here it's the firewall, the system or something that's causing the issue. Um, and then also you can download it as well uh, or clear the log as well. So that's always good to see. So you can download and if you need to share that with Vodafone technical support or any forums that you want to. But again, be wary when sharing this information. It does have your IP addresses, your WAN IP addresses and some other technical private information that you might not want to share. So just be wary of that. Then you have the reconnect and then the about. So we saw already all of those before. So as we said, that that's literally all the settings that we've gone through. Uh, and that, that's from the basic to the expert. Um, on the settings, as we said, it's quite straightforward and it does give you some customization um, through the uh, router. Again, if you have any issues uh, or any questions, then please leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And I hope you have found this uh, video uh, useful. Thanks for watching and have a great day.